Hi, my name is Leo and welcome to my channel. Today we are going to make Evolutions Diorama. As always, I will start with the base. Most of the time I use XPS foam for this part. Here you can see the Proxon Thermocut, which is mostly used to cut straight lines, but you can also use it to cut all kinds of different shapes. For this project I decided to go with a round base. This circle will be a place for the fountain, which will come soon. I will cut the edges and soften them with the sandpaper. Now it's time to build some stone bricks for the fountain. I like to remove rough edges to make them more natural looking. To get some diversity I will make different sized bricks. Being as smart as I am, I figured out that you can't make a circle out of even shapes. So remember to cut things before you glue them. For now let's continue making the rest of the bricks. With the last brick in its place we can proceed with making the second level of the fountain. This part of cutting can be tricky, because you need to get a flat surface on the inside. With a little bit of finger magic and some sanding, everything is possible. I will use this construction as the fountain well. Personally, I like to use a pencil when it comes to carving various stone structures. It's not the rough on the foam, and it actually does the job really well. Now comes the fun part, just make a ball out of aluminum foil and roll it over the foam to give it some nice texture. For the inside of the fountain I used plaster of Paris, just be careful to use small amounts at a time as it dries really quickly. After everything is dry it's time to sand it to get a smooth surface. To make things more interesting I decided to add two lanterns into the fountain. The pillars were a little bit tricky to make. If you know a better way how to make them, be free to tell me about it in the comment section. The rooftop took me a couple of tries, but I think I did a good job in the end. Let's start assembling the bottom part of the lantern, where I will pierce a hole so the LED light for the fire can be placed. I softened the edges with a pencil and used the aluminum ball to get the same texture as the fountain bricks. When it comes to the rocks I always start painting with the black paint because when you dry brush some lighter colors on top of it you get some great shadows and all textures just pop up. The trick with the fire is to use barely heated glue so you don't end up melting everything. Use a toothpick to get a small amount of glue and if you time it right you can make small spikes which will simulate flames. At the bottom of the base I marked and cut out the space where the switch for the LEDs will be. I found this wonderful mini LED lights which come pre-wired. This is my first time working with anything electric related, so don't be too judgy on how I made it work. To isolate and fix everything in place I used a lot of hot glue. It should also seal every hole so after the resin is poured there shouldn't be any leaks. After the electric part is over it's time to paint the rest of constructions black. I like to color the ground in brown before I put any details on, just to give it a more natural look later on. For the inside of the fountain I went with grey paint immediately, since I will pour the resin inside and there is no need for any shadows. As I mentioned before I used dry brushing of two shades of grey to make everything look like it's made out of stone. For the fire I used amber color and a little bit of yellow for the top part of the flames. When it comes to the grass, always use a lot of PVA glue cause you don't want grass flying all over the place. 
but there is a thin line between a lot and too much, so be careful. It's great how you can create such realistic grass with the static grass applicator. You can even make one like me out of a bug zapper. The top level of the fountain will be filled with ground, because there is something very special growing in there. Leftover plastic sheath from an old project will be used to seal an opening where the waterfall will come. Now it's time to make a tree which grows from the fountain. Since I couldn't find copper wires, I'm using steel ones. They're really difficult to bend, so I wouldn't recommend them for all projects. For the body, it's best to use aluminum foil. It's cheap, fast and easy to work with. You can use all kinds of clay which go above aluminum foil. Personally, I like to work with polymer clay. In the past I used air-dried kind, but I found it more difficult to work with. Sometimes when you're making a big project, clay dries too fast and you don't have time to make all textures perfectly. As you can see, polymer clay is just fine after a long time just sitting on a tree. By any means, I'm not a professional when it comes to working with clay, so I use random tools which I find appropriate for a specific task. After textures are done, let's move to the paint job. Base color is somewhere between brown and red. People call it maroon or something like that. Along the way, I decided to add some shadows and variants to the base color, so I covered everything with some black wash and then removed most of it with a paper towel. For the second and third coat, I'm using two shades of brown. I applied the darker brown a little bit heavier and the brighter one with some light dry brushing. The final touch is black wash all over again, just to add more shadows and make the texture pop. I tried to use hot glue for the flowers, but it didn't work so great, so I decided to go with the super glue in the end. Now, when the tray is done, it's time to put it in the fountain. And of course, my best friend hot glue is here again to help me in my need. The only thing which is left is to cover the glue with some dirt and to place the fountain well behind the tree. Preparations for the resin can start by putting together both levels of the fountain. Now it's time to mix and pour the resin. I really like to work with epoxy resin in my dioramas, there's just something special about it as it gives so much life and motion to the whole creation. After 24 hours, resin is cured and ready for the next steps. Happily, water texture from Alejo just came in time for this project. Many people claim that you can make a waterfall with this product, so I gave it a try. I must mention that it took almost two days for it to cure, but the result is astonishing. To fixate the waterfall to the fountain, I used the same product. As water falls down, it makes a lot of splashes, so I added more texture on the surface to make it more realistic. Since everything in the fountain needs a lot of time to cure, I went to make a fence which will surround the fountain. I found these cure sticks which are just perfect thing for the job. Just get ready to glue your fingers together and prepare yourself mentally cause it's a really time consuming thing to do. Red color was my go to for the fence, just add some contrast in the fountain. Also, many Japanese places have red fences, which I found very fancy. The Japanese style fence prompted me to make some stylish sign, which will hang from the tree. For this part, I found inspiration in the Tory gates. For anyone who is not familiar, 
Tori gates are traditional Japanese gates, which you can find at the entrance of shrines. To add some meaning, I decided to put a symbol of balance, since this is all about Espion and Umbreon. Meanwhile, the water texture has cured and now it's time to add some paint and volume to the waterfall. I made the mixture of baking soda, fine white sand, glue and white paint to get a paste which I used to simulate waterfall foam. Then, once again I used dry brush technique to highlight the surface of the water. Finally it's time to add some greenery. As I was low on the amount of flowers, I needed to improvise a little bit, so I used some leftover sponge from the last video to act as some flowers or leaves. With that completed, the only thing which is left is to test the fire for the last time and we can move on to the part which you all have been waiting for. Both figures are primed outside and they are ready for the paint job. For Umbreon, I started with his base color. Since his whole body is black, that makes my job really easy. I will just use an airbrush. For the yellow parts, I decided to paint with regular brushes. I tried to use masking tape in the past, but every time when I pull it from my figures, some of base coat peels off. Painting the eyes is always my favorite part. It's like you give a soul to a figure. I find Umbreon's size extremely interesting, they are so unusual with that red color. When everything is painted, I just corrected some minor mistakes and now we can move to the second figure. Next in line is Espion. His color was a little bit tricky to make. It's something between pink and purple. I gave all my best to get it as accurate as it can be. His long ears were a lot of fun to work with. I guess that those exercises with straight lines came in handy at the end. For his eyes I used some light purple, but I forgot to dilute the paint, so it came a little bit too rough textured. To make it more realistic, I added some reflection in his lower part of the eyes, which if you ask me, looks great. Only thing which is left is to add some details and with that I would call it done. Thank you all for watching and be free to like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video.